This video is how to set up and use Binance Web3 Wallet. So if you have a Binance account, you can now create a crypto wallet directly within the Binance app. So up at the top, you should see Web3. If you click that, it's gonna take you through to the Web3 Wallet. I've already got mine set up. If you haven't got yours, you'll have to set it up. There'll just be a yellow box here that says create wallet. So go ahead and do that. When you press create wallet, it's gonna create the wallet for you and bring you through basically to this page. However, when you create the wallet, you do have to back it up in some way. So I'll explain exactly what this wallet is and how it creates your private key and your seed phrase, and then how it backs that up. This is different to wallets you may have used in the past. This is how Binance Web3 Wallet works. It's an MPC wallet known as multi-party computation. So it creates your private key and of course your seed phrase. And usually when you set up a hot wallet on your phone, you get the wallet, your private key is kept on your phone, and then you get a 12 word phrase that you have to write down on a piece of paper. Well, this is a modern version of that where you don't get the seed phrase. In fact, what happens is your seed phrase is created and then sharded and encrypted and kept in three different places. One of the places is Binance's servers for a third of your private key. The other is on your device. And then the third is used as a backup in your cloud. If you lose your phone, you can get a new phone, download the Binance app, put your cloud share and Binance's share together and recreate the wallet. That's how you recover the wallet in case you lose your phone. Because this is MPC and the private key is sharded, it's a lot safer than having a normal hot wallet because the private key is never in one place. There is never the whole thing on one device, either Binance's servers, your phone or your iCloud or your Google Cloud. So this is a much safer way to create a hot wallet because the private key and the seed never touch each other or are in the same place. When you want to sign transactions, the one on your phone and the one on Binance's servers come together and you can go through with transactions. So if you are looking for a hot wallet, this is a way to do that. Now, what you have to do when you create the wallet is back it up. And there's two different ways to back it up. So if it asks you to do that, you either can save the share to your cloud or you can create a QR code and then save that somewhere else. So up at the top, if you have a wallet, you can see your wallet address and it should say wallet one. So if you just click on that, so I'm gonna click on my name and here are my wallets. So I've set this up. Now I've backed mine up, but you may not have backed yours up yet. So if you click on this wallet, the three dots in the top right hand corner of this box, you can customize it with your name and then it says backup management. So if we click that, uh, you can see the backup options, either on your cloud service or on a QR code. If you want to back up with a QR code, it's gonna give you that QR code. You can screenshot it or save it somewhere. I wouldn't recommend keeping that anywhere online in case you get hacked. Uh, that's obviously not a, not a good thing. However, even if your share gets revealed or hacked, it's gonna be very difficult for a hacker to actually recreate your wallet because they will have to log into your Binance account with your details as well to recreate. So unless they have that, they still can't recreate the wallet even if you get hacked. This is why MPC is a little bit safer. If you wanna back it up in your iCloud, you can uh, and do that. Now, the only thing you have to remember with an MPC wallet is the password to the encryption in your cloud account if you want to back up the wallet in your cloud. If you lose your phone and you do have to reload the wallet on a, on a new phone with your Binance account, it's gonna ask you to uh, take that file from your cloud and you know decrypt it and link it with Binance's version. That is password encrypted. So choose a password here that you can remember or keep that somewhere safe. That's the only thing you need to remember with this wallet. By default, when you create the wallet, you're given a new EVM address. This is the address that you can use over all EVM chains, Ethereum, BNB chain, Polygon, Avalanche, many others. And so that's your address across all those chains. The way that you can see that, if you look at assets here, go to the right hand side, that kind of box logo, you can see all networks here. So basically all networks are supported. I haven't activated a Solana address yet, but that is a possibility. You can see all of the popular EVM chains, right? Arbitrum, Polygon, Optimism, BNB, Ethereum. 
They all have the exact same address in this wallet, but they are different chains. And so your assets are different, but it's all the same address that you have. If you scroll down, you can see the network support. So pretty much every blockchain that you would want to use is actually supported in here, either through an EVM address or if the uh, blockchain has a different type of address standard, then uh, it's going to be supported like that. So what you do, rather than activating these networks, because they're activated already, is come out of here and just add the assets. So you can do that easily. If you go to manage tokens right here, you can just search for tokens. So if I search for, let's say, uh, Matic as a token, you can see this token is supported on various different blockchains. So all you do is just toggle this on the blockchain that you want to use it on. So Matic on you know, the Polygon network, you can toggle that on and maybe Matic on the Ethereum network, then go back here and you should see them added to this list. So you can see that now. So you can add in the tokens that you want to the bottom right hand corner of each token icon. You can see the icon of the network that it's on. So you can choose to add them in as you want if you want to actually use those tokens. Because this wallet is within your Binance app, it links really easily with your exchange account and it can read the balances that you have there. So if you want to switch assets between your exchange and the wallet, uh, it's really easy to do that. So press receive up at the top. From here, it's going to give you a list of assets that you have listed or other popular assets. You can click on these. So if I click on Bitcoin, this is my Bitcoin address. So if you're sending from a different wallet, they obviously need your Bitcoin address. They can send it in here really easy. You have the address and the QR code. So someone can send you that from their exchange account or their wallet. However, if you want to send it in from your Binance exchange, if you use that, press this up at the top, transfer in. And it's actually going to list out all of the assets you have in your exchange account, the balances there and what you can send over. So from my Binance spot and funding wallet, that's fine for me. And it's to my wallet, which is here. My uh, address is pre-populated. What coins do you want to transfer over? So let's say I want to transfer some BNB. What network do you want to use it on? Uh, well, I know that I want to switch over the BNB smart chain. So I can click that and then press transfer. And then it takes me through to... Uh, how much I want to transfer over. You can see my address is pre-populated here, so I don't have to worry about pasting that wrong or anything like that. We're using this chain, and then it actually tells me what my available balance is in my Binance Exchange account, so I can just press whatever amount and then press withdraw. That is a blockchain transaction because your wallet is a blockchain wallet, but it's easy to just go Binance Exchange to your wallet, press withdraw, you can check all the details, and that just transfers it over from your exchange account to your self-custody wallet. If you want to send out of the wallet, then again, you can transfer it directly back to your Binance Exchange if you press transfer. That's basically your exchange and your wallet linked up, and then you can do the reverse of what we've just done. Or if you just press send, this is a normal wallet transaction. So you need a blockchain address. You can choose your Binance account or some other address. So search for the symbol that you want to uh, send out. It's going to give you a list of all the assets that you can actually send. So I'll click on one that I have here and then it's going to say where is the address. So if you're sending to a different wallet or a whatever else, you can just uh, copy and paste the wallet address in here just like any other normal wallet. So one of the things Binance is trying to do in Web3 Wallet is abstract away all of the blockchain stuff. If you use blockchains or any dApps, you will know that you have to connect your wallet, you have to you know, go and use the dApp, you have to see the transaction and, and go through with it. So it's a lot of steps to do a transaction. Well, if we go to the Earn platform here, what Binance are trying to do is abstract away using the dApp. So this is essentially lending on Venus. Now, Venus is a BNB smart chain lending dApp. So you can use that if you want through this. Instead of logging into the dApp, it just gives you all of the rates that are on Venus right now. So for stable coins, it's giving you some you know, APYs here. Uh, so if we click on FDUSD, which is Binance's uh, stable coin, up on the top left, you can see it has the Venus logo. So what this is, is lending out on this uh, decentralized lending protocol. So we're not actually you know, facing the dApp, we're not using the dApp, but if you wanna supply this, you press supply. Now obviously you need some FDUSD, but if I press supply here, I'll accept the terms and press confirm. And then it says, well, how much do you want to supply? So if you have some FDUSD in your um, BNB smart chain address in your wallet, you can supply it right here. Usually what you'd have to do is log into the dApp, see the dApp, go through it, look at the supplies and everything like that. So 
This is trying to abstract away using dApps and making it a lot more simple. Now, this is very small, obviously, because there are other lending dApps like Aave and others that you may want to use. But this is trying to simplify that process, just saying if you've got this token, you can use DeFi with a few clicks. There is also a Discover tab within the wallet, which is more like a dApp browser if you've used other smartphone wallets. So what you can do is search for dApps right here via their name or their address of the website. So up at the top, if you press that, you can search for you know different dApps. So I'll search for Uniswap. And there are no tokens named Uniswap, although Uni would be a token, as you can see here. If you go to dApps in the middle, it says, hey, this is a dApp that you might be looking for. So I can press that. And then it says open dApp. And I'll accept the terms. But what we're doing here basically is actually connecting uh, the wallet that we have via the DAP browser. So if you press connect like this, there are some bugs and things. So this says MetaMask, which I don't have. I don't have a MetaMask, but if I click MetaMask, it does actually connect my wallet and it sees my balances for some reason. It's not MetaMask, but that's just what I have to press. And I can actually go ahead, it sees my balances and I can use the DAP if I want. So I'll just press this uh, icon and disconnect here. And then if we go back to the DAP browser, you can scroll down all of the popular DAPs. So if we go into trending DAPs, you see all of the popular you know, DAPs across crypto that you can go in and use. So you can essentially use virtually all of the DAPs that you'd want to use right within here. And you know that's a pretty easy use case. Uh, if we have a DAP that isn't in here, like if you want to connect to a DAP on your computer, then you can do that. If you go back to the home, up on the top left, you can see the QR code or the scanner. So when connecting to a DAP on a computer, you can just connect via Wallet Connect and it's going to give you a QR code. You can scan it with your phone. And what you're doing now is connecting to the DAP via the QR code and your phone is going to sign the transactions. So you can use the app on your computer, go through with everything. And then when it comes time to sign the transaction, it's going to pop up in your Web3 wallet, do you want to sign the transaction? You press yes, and you actually go ahead with it. If you don't have a Binance Exchange account yet, I'll leave a link to a deposit and trading bonus down in the description. I'm James with Money ZG. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.